Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We're coming to you live here from our studio in South Florida, bringing you our first impression session of our Spotlight, where we talk about our favorite aspects of the game, uh, any constructive criticisms we have, and yeah. most importantly, uh, would we play the game again? And tonight, the game in question is Court of the Dead Mourner's Call by Project Raygun. Uh, yeah. We just showed that off on our Spotlight, so if you, don't have, if you haven't had the opportunity, go back, watch the video on demand. Uh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. And we would like to point out that this stream and all of this week's streams are brought to you by Court of the Dead Mourners Call by Project Ray Gunch. A big, big shout out to them yeah. for being supportive of the stream. And they're launching tomorrow. 9 a.m. Pacific, Pacific so which 12 is noon. Noon Eastern. And I think, if I recall, they have a 48-hour um, funding goal. Ooh. So they fund the 48 hours. I think the game comes with metal tokens. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. So. I like that. Uh, so, let's give a little bit of a background as to what Court of the Dead Mourner's Call is. So, Court of the Dead, as a property, is a Sideshow property. So, Sideshow is this company that does uh, amazing art and uh, 3D sculptures, uh, high-end premium Collectibles, toys, action statues, figures, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, I'm a big fan of their stuff, and I've seen the Sideshow uh, Court of the Dead uh, material come up throughout the years. Absolutely beautiful artwork. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Project Raygun took that material and ran with it and made a uh, Court of the Dead Mourner's Call board game. So this board game is your you know, classic dudes on a map, yep. where it's uh, area control, resource management, uh, where you are playing as the different factions and guilds of the Court of the yeah. Dead. So uh, some uh, drafting in there. Yep, a little, bit of, little bit of drafting. And uh, you're... Harvesting these souls, uh, trying to increase your power within the Court of the Dead, and uh, fending off heaven and hell in the process. Yeah. So, I don't think there's any more background other than that. I think just that's it's a, a, a pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, so we first like to talk about our favorite aspects of the game, and we start out with the person that won. So Josh, who was that? Not me. <laughs> uh, so I won the uh, game this no, evening. No, no, it was just not. Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering it was just the two of us. Oh, uh, no, you were deaf actually. Yeah. So uh, I was the winner this evening. So first, I, I, I we've touched on it a couple times over. I'm just going to jump into it and say that this game is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to switch over to the board view now. Okay. Uh, so this is the board of the game. Artwork's really pretty. You've zoom got zoom in a little bit. Uh, yeah. We, we didn't get to do this during the. Uh, uh, I dropped the remote. So. Keep talking there. Oh, so we didn't get to do this really show like the board off itself because uh, we zoomed out mostly. But and don't. we would like to point out that this is a prototype copy of the game. Yeah. So, so as pretty as it looks, it's going to get nicer looking. Uh, so you see a lot of the artwork there. It's all these locations. So the locations are kind of uh, soft segmented out by this flowing river of Etheria that you see here. Uh, so each one of these islands is one of the different locations on the board. Yep. Um, just really gorgeous. And then you've got the trackers on either side. So the trackers are going to represent the uh, the different meters that we've got going on. So that's the Celestial Suspicion. You saw the Etheria pool at the bottom. Then on this side, we've got our uh, Dreads Grip Threat. And then, as you can see here, we've got the Army of Minis that it comes with. And Josh's Cup. So if you can move that, please. Yeah, so you get, the, you get the Army of Minis that you get. So there's uh, eight of each guild of minis, yeah. and there's six guilds, so quick math, that's 48 minis that you're getting with the game. Plus, Plus the two maxi minis, as I'll call them there. Uh, so you've got the, the death mini, and you've got the Malavestros mini. Uh, so death is going to be your first player slash tiebreak token, and Malavestros is your cancel of a location or card token. So altogether, yeah. you're going to get uh, well, 50. That's 50 minis right there, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, four die, the, sh the shard tokens, and then the bases that go with them and all of those goodies. Uh, so then on top of that, you get the artwork for the game as well. Uh, so you've got the mourner cards. They're all themed to look like the tarot cards, uh, kind of like with that shaded artwork like that, yeah. kind of very classic looking, yeah, black and gray. Uh, with the hint of the faction colors, then the actual uh, court cards, which are the, the more famous characters from within the property uh, are the, the full-size tarot cards. Each one's got unique artwork there, and they, the art's just really pretty and slightly creepy, too, as you can see by the, the evil court jester there, yeah. Malvestros. Uh, so, Josh, how about you? What's some of your favorite aspects of the game? And we'll, we'll just jump back and forth yeah, and talk um, about this. So we've played this game three times. So this typically, uh, for a spotlight stream, so if people have watched this a lot before, uh, 
typically play the first time on stream and kind of show how it yeah, plays, so just learning and things like that. The usual is we'll have one person that's read the rules, one person that they've explained the rules to, and then if there's a third person, they go in completely blind. Yeah. Um, this we did a little bit differently just because this is a heavier game than we normally spotlight. Right. Um, on the heavier side. So we, we played two games of this yesterday, actually. Um, and I've enjoyed each game. I get to play around with the strategy more, and I see how things work together, and they clicks. Yeah. And, and, and that's what you want in this game. game is, like, the more you play it, the more I'm like, oh, I can do this, and I can do that, and doing things that I didn't think of in the first game. Right. Combos I didn't think of. Right. So, um, And I got hit by combos I didn't think of, and, and things like that. So, um, so like, I got... I got this card. So uh, Colonel Tatterburn. Colonel Tatterburn. And then where's uh, where's Relic? Relic was hanging out here just a sec second ago. So here's Relic Ravlash. So so I saw the third round. I got the Colonel after this after I played this card. Yeah. But with the Colonel, I get to look at the top card of the Wallace deck. And then see if it's even something you want to possibly get. And then I saw it was an artifact. Like, oh, I want that. So with Relic, I could have... Said, drawn the top three cards. If there's an artifact there, I would have got it. Artifacts are a little bit rare in the game, so there was a combo there. Like I just kind of yeah. There's there's a lot of nice up. synergy in between uh, a handful of the cards, yeah. and it allows you to alter your strategy, as Josh is saying. And the nice thing is, there's one objective to winning, but there's many ways to reach that objective. Yeah. So the objective is simply get the most points. But you get those points through farming unity, uh, through farming your influence, which is actually a, a sliding scale yeah. of point values, which is a very big thing. And then there's uh, hidden objective cards as well. So part of the game isn't it's not telegraphed exactly who's winning. Yeah. So there is an opportunity for some people to be extremely secretive about what they're doing and have a severe come from behind uh, if you don't see what they're doing the yeah. entire game. So like, I really like the strategy. So yesterday we played three players. We did get to play of Anne. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a little bit more area control. And that part has taken... This third game for me to really understand the con, like what you could really do with some of that area control stuff, and, and, and kind of work that in. Right. And I can see this would be in four players that area control being really niche. Yeah. So to the to the game, what um, you were doing at the end of our game here is you were really muscling me out of spots. Yeah. By keeping the dreads grip track as high as possible, and then having your immunity yep. to the dreads grip effects and just spamming your stuff on my spots and being like, you're not going to get the majority. And if you do have the majority, you could still lose all your players beforehand, which actually yep. did happen to me. So, um, so yeah, I, I really like the, the mechanisms of the game and, and how everything just flowed together. It was really, it was really nice. Um, I really enjoy it. Uh, one of the other things I enjoyed about this game is it, it's actually easy to be seen in the uh, phase order here. So there's eight distinct phases in the game, and each of those phases is different mechanically. Yeah. So phase one is uh, dice rolling mixed with uh, kind of like resource distribution. Uh, phase two is uh, actions that are going to be changed every turn. So that adds some interest so that every yeah. round is different. Uh Three is your drafting, so you're going to be drafting cards there. Yeah. Uh, phase four is the action phase, which we went into the whole, that's the whole dudes on a map area control phase of things. Uh, five is the dreads grip, so that's resource management as well. And then you have your celestial tithe, which is a blind betting system. Mm -hmm. uh, and then seven is the resolving the dudes on a map phase, so yep. resolving the action phase. And then the cleanup. So you're talking about you've got drafting, you've got resource management, you've got uh, area control, you've got blind betting, you've got you know it, dice rolling. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. And it seemed daunting. I'm going to say that it seemed daunting when we first opened up the game and read through the rules. Yeah. But midway to, ha to three quarters of the way through our first game, uh, myself, Josh, and Ann all felt pretty comfortable with how the game worked. And the second game went significantly faster and smoother. So I th it really only took one game to fully understand the game conceptually. Yeah. Uh, but this is one of those games where, as you're playing it, the more you play it, the more you see the different strategies that you can kind of open yourself up to the possibilities yeah. of playing it. Um, one of the other things is all the mourners have unique abilities. So depending on how you draw them, like 
really changes that too. Right. So not only do the factions and guilds give you unique uh, benefits if you control the most of them, but each of the individual cards. cards are unique abilities. And then each one of the individual court cards are unique abilities as well. So yeah. I, I definitely enjoyed that because one of my big things is having unique player abilities. And uh, the hidden objectives as well as the unique mourner cards are definitely hit all the notches on yeah. there for that. Uh, so jumping into the constructive criticism phase. Yes. I'm going to let you start with that. Is there anything that uh, stood out to you that maybe you would have changed if you had the opportunity? My biggest issue with this game is I, uh, I, iconography. Iconography, yeah. I, um, I, I'm going to have to so, echo so that because I would definitely say this. Look at the thing. legend. Legend doesn't look that bad. Everything looks really clean. The only thing I'm not a fan of is the uh, Ethereum. Mm -hmm. I can't pronounce words today. The, uh, Ethereum? Ethereum. Ethereum? Um, it's kind of like photorealistic. Yeah. Well, everything else is drawn. And if you turn that card around, um, during the recruit, th those almost you can't see what those are. Uh, during the recruit phase. So you spend three or oh, five. Yeah, yeah th it's... So, my, yeah, my, my biggest issue as well would be the iconography. Um, the issue is when it's big, it's fine. It's just on some of these smaller cards. I'm trying to find some. Right. So when it's this size, I have no problem distinguishing those. Josh might have a little bit more problem just because he is colorblind, so they have a tendency to blend a little bit more, I'm assuming. The bone and spear, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little hard. It, it's a little hard on some of these cards. So um, I know, for example, here... So this here, Relic Ravlatch, is actually a really great example. Uh, so at the bottom of his card here, so it's gain two. I realize now that it's more... I, I can't... I honestly can't see what it is. I'm assuming that it's bone influence because he is a uh, bone yeah. faction. Um, uh, that's... It's a little small. So if they were distinguished a little bit better, I would yeah. appreciate it. Like, but like the the icon size changes between them, and then also like where I saw something else, and I where they use these icons saying, "Oh, flesh ones." Yeah, and then there was a card that was it said move any like flesh ones, but it used the generic guild icon. Ah, okay. uh, like some consistency stuff, but like minor things that could be easily fixed. I just, I'm just putting that out there. Like that was the biggest thing that made it hard. Was that was some of the icons can get a little hard to read. This is a prototype, so That's, hopefully things change. Yeah. Um, and other small thing is the influence tracks. I'm assuming this is going to change. The tokens oh, are the, bigger yeah. than the track, and I, I'm. I'm sure that's going to be fixed. That's just a prototype yeah. issue. I, I'm so, not, so, yeah, I wasn't even going to bring that up because I think that that's something unique to our... Yeah, so the fact I'm, that it's a prototype. It's a prototype. So I don't want to like go into like depths like that. It's just some of these icons could be bigger, and that would solve the issues. Um, Personally, I'm a little upset that you went first because I we both like to, to go in and reach for something, even if it's small and minute, just to... Talk about the game and make sure that you know we yeah. make we discuss anything that people could have an issue with. But personally, I love the way the rest of the game played out. I did not take any issue with the rest of the game. Um, I know what you're going to say now. I, I'm giving you that point. Yeah, I know, I know you. you so had it. the only distinguishing factor with some of the minis is the shape of them. Um, uh, that's the icons for the minis on the cards. Yeah, that was super. Like you said, oh, what what mini is that? Most of the time, on the bottom of the card, they they do spell out yeah. what the actual faction. But I is. think there was the guild. I'm sorry, the guild. Um, like that. Yes. So this is a great example here. Uh, it says to gain one. I'm not sure which one that is. Uh, that's a shroud covenant. Uh, just because I can kind of tell by the shape, but it's not. It's not easy. So if that had the which one it was, mm -hmm. I would be fine with that. Um, that was one area where during setup and figuring that out, it just caused you to stumble for a second. Yeah. And if you pick up the card and you look harder at it and you, you could compare it to the mini, it's not that big of an issue. But having a little subtext there would make life yeah. a lot easier. Um, the other thing is like, so both spirit guys have... They're, they're this, is, this is such a first world problem. I know. But these aren't going to show up on the camera. 
Um, let me switch over to board cam. Okay. So these two minis here, uh, both have, they're both the spirits, so they're the same color, and they both have kind of an elongated staff, spear, something. So first glance, they're kind of very similar to each other, but they're meant to be two different ones. Yeah. And it matters because you can run out of the resource during the game. Yep. And then the, the two flesh ones the are... The two flesh ones are fairly similar as well. Just The bone size. ones are super duper easy to yeah. tell apart. Bone ones are like super easy. Bone ones are perfect. So you got the yeah. one guy, big, tall, standing knight with the big sword and big shield. The other guy's got a funny hat, and he's got a scroll. Yeah. So that's perfect. Yeah. So it's just a minor thing. And um, I was going to say something about colors. The colors of the minis here are fine. I don't know if I know uh, the colors on the board, for since I'm colorblind. Yeah. The bone and spear fact factions are a little too close for me. Okay. So they're... They're tan and green. Yeah, I. They're perfectly distinguishable for me, but again, colorblind. Yeah, There's so a reason. Just um, a note. I mean, it's not horrible. It's just a note. If you are colorblind, there might be some um, things like that. Um, the other little thing, which is just part of the game. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's the orange and the tan. Just kind of. Um, I, I don't know what you're looking for. I was looking for a spirit mini with one of your bases. I I took them all off. <laughs> yep. So, but these colors are so similar to me. I didn't. Hold on. There's the board. Oops. For these, at least. It's not super similar. Oh. But, like, I was seeing your minis, your spirit minis, and correlating them as mine. I was like, oh, wait, no, I, I need oh. to double check the base just because it was. I mean, that's the point of the base. Yeah, though, so. it's it's just the minor thing. Yeah. But no, uh, the game was a lot of fun. Like, I don't want to nitpick. At it yeah, we we were nitpicking a, a little bit here, but uh, I really want to just emphasize how beautiful the game was. How there's a lot of stuff going on in the good way, because at no point did I feel like the game was cumbersome in what we were doing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and it kept a lot of interest in the fact that there's so many different. Mechanisms synergizing together at once. Yeah, and depending on what you get dealt, you you kind of do a new strategy every game. Right. Like th there's the replayability of this is very high because it isn't cookie cutter like same strategy every single complete time. euro. Or you're, oh, I'm do playing power grid. I'm going to do the exact same strategy every game. Right. Um, you you kind of change it up a little. Your bit. Your hidden objectives, your ulterior motives. Uh, are going to alter that up, and as well as you can play starting, reactionarily. You're also, your starter, your starting cards, what abilities you have. And Any of the cards you draw, because they're each going to give you different abilities. But it's more of the first starting card you have and that, that secret trait you have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so comment here. Thank yeah. you for the feedback on the iconography. It's very helpful. We've been discussing as we move for the prototype to final production, so stay tuned for updates. Yeah, awesome. There you go. And the skull yeah. tracker tokens. Yeah, yeah figured. we figured that yeah, would be. Uh, uh, that's Pat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I figured I just I wanted to mention that, and we mention it here because as it's going on Kickstarter, this is the place where they can fix it. Yeah, and, and hopefully our little criticisms is just gone. It's just like yeah, no. That, yep. Hopefully we look like crazy people. Yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> um, so that that like was really the minor thing. Um, and I, I think lost. that's that's really it. I don't yeah. mean to nitpick too much, just because I think that the game was very very polished in yeah. in the way that it played. No, um, it was polished, and we played three games, and each game we played was pretty different, I think, on how they mm -hmm. were played. Absolutely. And, um, and that just shows that replayability thing. Most important question, then, and, you know, replayability is a huge yes. factor in this. Would you play it again? Yes, I'm sad I have to send this off to the next reviewer. I'm sorry, we're not sending this back. <laughs> I'm going to hold it <laughs> ransom. Uh, no, seriously, I really did enjoy playing this game, and typically I don't lean towards Euro-style games, this didn't feel cumbersome like I feel like a lot of Euro style games go. But this also has a lot of theme, like a good Ameritrash game. Like, yeah. Like, it, it's got a lot of that. It's got a nice backstory. Yeah. I would like to point out, too, that the rule books have a lot of flavor text in it. Yeah. So there's a lot of backstory and flavor in the rule yeah. book that make it interesting to read. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got to read through that a bit. Um, no, we had a. I had a blast. Awesome. So big shout out again to uh, Pat for joining us. Really did appreciate it. He was a lot of fun. And uh, thanks again to the uh, Sideshow folks for sending it over. 
having a good time with this project, Raygun. Thank you guys for sponsoring tonight's stream. So other than that, I think that's going to be it for this evening. Yeah. So there's going to be Twist Gaming signing off. I'm Matt. I'm Josh. Thank you so much, guys. And as a reminder, <laughs> this stream and all of this week's streams are brought to you by Court of the Dead, Mourner's Call by Project Raygun. <laughs> so good night, everyone, and stay tuned for the winner of the giveaway. All right. Thanks, everyone.